Hey everybody, it's Bella and Levi. We're here to talk to you about our most recent Selena retreat that we had in Colombia. It was an absolute blast, it lasted, well, it was supposed to have lasted five weeks, but it lasted a lot longer. Yeah, we actually stayed there for seven weeks with the same people and it was an absolute blast. So we're just gonna dive right into it so you can understand how this retreat works and if you wanna go on one, um, if it's something you wanna do. The overall retreat actually did technically last five weeks. Each group had about 20 people in it. Our group had about 17. Uh, and they we both traveled around Colombia separately, so that way our group wasn't so gigantic. And then on the last week, which is the fifth week, we met up in Palomino, Colombia, and spent that last week together. In the past, we've done Selena. We did Selena Co-Live, which is uh, where you pay monthly and you can travel around. But we had never done a retreat. Um, this was our first one. This was actually the 10th Selena retreat. So it was kind of a big one, definitely the biggest one they've ever done. Yeah, so we started off the retreat in Selena, Medellin. The entire city is a botanical garden, basically. It's it truly is. Insanely green. It's a big party town, so like it was a really fun place to start off with our group. The overview we said was like the location was a great place. Um, it's beautiful, like I said, botanical garden. But then it was also a good place for us to like get to know each other, so we could start to like bond as a group, um, which was really fun. So it used to be pretty dangerous. Just FYI, Colombia used to be really dangerous in the like, seventies and eighties. Yeah, cool. now it is a lot safer. Of course, there's always going to be that like risk of petty theft. Um, which if you're aware and, you know, take pre precautions, you'll probably be fine though. Overall, the city has been just extremely gentrified and is feels extremely safe and is very beautiful. Um, one of the things we did was Comuna 13 and they built an escalator and through the entire, like, the whole village is on a mountainside basically. Um, so normally you would have to walk everywhere, but because they built the escalator, the transportation just like really like rejuvenated the place and once the gang violence was ended, unfortunately thanks to like a small civil war, um, the, the place is now thriving. There's graffiti, there's music, there's just so much culture there. It's one of the coolest things we get there. But real quick, just Medellin um, is the second largest city in Colombia. Uh, as far as getting around goes, the Salina that we stayed at was in El Poblado, which is one of the most uh, touristic places. It's where all the clubs and parties and dancing and things like that are. The Salina there is like literally a five minute walk from uh, Valencia, which is the main, Provenza, which is like the main area where you can go out, restaurants, bars, um, really beautiful, very walkable. So much to do, so much to see. Yeah, and also like Medellin is like, they call it the city of eternal spring. So like the weather is genuinely perfect year round, like you're 75 degrees Fahrenheit. 20 degrees Celsius, like you're really like sitting pretty when it comes to being able to just be super comfortable, but don't wear sandals. Apparently it is like a big no-no. We definitely wore them once and we learned the hard way. Um, so just breaking down some of the things that we did that we really liked. So Camino Trece, like Levi said, another tour we did was called Guatape. It's a city, uh, maybe an hour outside of Medellin. It's where this giant rock is and you can like climb up the rock and then there's like boat tours. It's really cool. Another thing we did was took a Chiva bus, which is just basically like a party bus where you're just standing up and everyone's dancing. It's super fun, night. super, super fun. Minnesota. Okay, week two. This is when we went to Selena Quindío, which is the countryside of Colombia, also known as like the coffee growing region. Um, we definitely brought some coffee. We definitely yeah. did. Very chill location, um, sunny, warm during the day, a little bit chilly at night, but overall just a, a great place to kind of get out of the city. This week was a lot more like, let's sit by the fire, let's talk deeper, like where's everybody at in their life? What are we feeling? And so- So we were really kind of in the middle of nowhere. The neighbors were all just coffee growers and had different farms and stuff. Literally our next door neighbor there had a, a peacock. And, yeah, and it would um, squawk. Yeah, it was kind of cool. But most of the time you just took Willis Jeeps. That's like the form of transportation. So if you need to go anywhere, it costs like $5 for a one-way trip, but like nine few people can fit in these like old rugged Jeeps. It's super, super fun. Some of the things that we did that we loved were the Kikora Valley, which 
has the tallest palm trees in the world. This is definitely like a must-see of Colombia. Like you have to go to the Cocora Valley. Like I would say like it is one of the coolest views I've ever seen in my life. So the third location that we went to was in Bogota. There's three Salinas in Bogota. We stayed at the Salina Chapinero location, which as as far as like the location goes, it was very central to the entire city. Though I think some of the other Salinas might have a little bit more of a unique experience. So maybe try out one of the other ones. But in general, Bogota, a very big city. I mean, it's the capital of Colombia. Um, pretty chill atmosphere in general. It's not like there's like things to do every waking second like there is in Medellin. Um, and it's just kind of crazy because it's a bigger city than Medellin, but we literally tried to go out and party on it like a Thursday and the whole town was shut down. Um, I think it was maybe a holiday, but still. It, yeah. it was just a lot less happening in general because I think people are actually doing their jobs and stuff. But in general, where we stayed, the Chapanero location was close to this place called Zona T. Zone T. Um, but it's where a lot of shopping, bars, restaurants are located. Um, Uber's very cheap in Bogota. And when we say like the town was chill, it was also one of the wildest places. We went to a club called Teatron Club, and it's the largest club in Colombia. It's literally a huge like complex of different rooms playing different music. You could get almost any vibe that you wanted to, rooftop bars, dive bars. Different, like each room had its own unique experience. Um, it was gigantic. You could get easily lost. It's the biggest club in all of Colombia. Uh, it is a gay club, but everybody goes. So like, don't let that stop you by far. It felt like Disney World, honestly, for adults. Bogota Brewing Company, it's like the best craft beer, beer in Colombia. And they have lots of locations all over the city, but there's one right next to the Salina Chapanero. And we literally went there every night. So that's mostly what we did in Bogota. Um, week four, we went to Villa de Leyva, which is a mountain town about four hours outside of Bogota. Uh, absolutely just stunning town with a, a sweet atmosphere, very sunny during the day and chilly at night. It was, it was very high elevation. You can walk almost anywhere from the Salina there. It's very centrally located like cobblestone street vibes like really really quaint town really wanted to make the most of our time together so there was like a lot of like really late nights by the fire and just like waiting and chatting up with each other every single night it, it was really special amazing place some things that we did together that was really fun or actually didn't get to go on this one but the horseback riding tour uh, we went on a waterfall tour we love Via de Leva. And then our last location where we reconvened with the other group was Palomino. Palomino is a beach town uh, on the northern coast of Colombia, so very Caribbean vibes. Surf, beach bum kind of atmosphere, and it's hot all the time there, like hot in the day, hot in the night. It was pretty cold all throughout Colombia before we got to Palomino. So I, it was very like, it was a very big climate shift for all of us, but- yeah, um, Colombia in general is, is a very like mountainous region. Yeah. And so you, you've got like a lot of elevation. So even though you're on like the equator, it's still really chilly, but it never gets cold. Cold, cold. But Palomino was hot. Yeah. And the surf was pretty small. So don't go there if you're looking for like a surf location specifically, but if you're there, definitely check out the surf. Yeah, it's great for beginners. It's great for anybody. The waves are just not like, you know, world renowned or anything like that. But in general, the Salina in Palomino is phenomenal in terms of the location. You are literally on the beach. Like, the the bar, which is in Salina and like the co-work are literally on the sand basically. So you're you're definitely right, right there. So some things that we did in Palomino that we really liked. We went on like this tubing trip, which was supposed to be like a half an hour hike. It was more like an hour and a half hike. Yeah. Um, and everyone was wearing flip flops, but we got to the end of the hike and got to meet some like indigenous tribes that um, are pretty disconnected from civilization. It was just a really unique experience to see their way of life. And then really close to the village, we hopped in the river and floated down on tubes all the way to the ocean. Yeah, it was like four hours of floating. It was really beautiful. We might make it right now. Ready? Oh! <laughs> Oh, 
But overall, the retreat was amazing. I would 100% recommend anybody who's a digital nomad who wants to like create community while they're traveling to check out one of the Selena Digital Nomad Retreats. They do them all over the world. At any place that there are Selenas, they're probably planning a retreat. Um, we, this was our first one, we really enjoyed it. We were actually the technical content creators for the retreat. So we um, ended up doing every tour there was and every experience there was because we had to get content for it. Also why this video probably has some good footage. But yeah, I, I'd say it was like really worth it. But then there was like the two bonus weeks. So the two bonus weeks, we went to, right after Palomino, we went to the La Guajira Desert, which was just one of the most insane places on this earth. It's, just think Sahara Desert right into the ocean. Yeah. And so you're, you're like on sand dunes that just drop off into the ocean. And it's, you know, there's- It's one of the most unique experiences. Red, red rock in the world. cliffs, and it's just absolutely stunning. And and definitely a tour unique. worth going on if you're in Palomino or Santa Marta or at any of those locations on the Caribbean coast, like take the trip, take the tour to level here and don't try to do it by yourself. Definitely, like, yeah. It's, it's not even technically in Colombian jurisdiction. It's kind of on the, the border of Colombia and Venezuela. The uh, indigenous tribe of the YU technically owns this land, but we're going to do a video completely on La Guajira, so I'm not going to give you too many details. The last place that we went to was Cartagena, which is one of Colombia's largest cities, and it's its largest city on the beach. Very unique architecture, beautiful, colorful city, full of life, full of parties, full of great food. Um, we loved it. So it was just a great place to end our retreat. The coolest part of this whole experience is meeting the people from the retreat. So if you're one of those lucky 17 in Caribe or 40 total from Caribe and Pacifico, we thank you for the experience you gave us. Like and subscribe and send this to all the people that are interested in doing a retreat. See you guys.